Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we've covered a wide area of information here today, but I'd like to sum up some of what I think are the important points. There's been a lot of confusion regarding the medical terms and the definitions used. We've debated that during the constitutionality argument. The fact that a D&E procedure is different than a dismemberment abortion, which is defined in the bill. Mr. Speaker, some would have you to believe that case law can never change. Some would have you to believe that medical technology cannot advance. Mr. Speaker, when you look at the case law that was referenced, it was consistently Roe versus Wade. And while I understand that that is a very passionate talking point, the fact is that portions of that case have changed throughout the decades since it was first decided. When you look at Roe versus Wade, it had a trimester approach, which was later overturned during the Planned Parenthood v. Casey case with Pennsylvania's own Abortion Control Act. That put in the, the standard for viability, which at that time was 24 weeks. In the late 90s, I worked as an x-ray technologist, and I routinely x-rayed neonatal babies while in, in the NICU, the neonatal intensive care unit. And I can tell you that I x-rayed 24, 25, 26-week-old babies at that time, barely the size of my hand, barely weighing more than one pound. They were viable. They could live. Medical advances have happened since that time. Advances in prenatal care and advances in how we can save babies much sooner than 24 weeks. But when you look at the law as it is currently written, we cannot escape the reality that our current law allows babies to be aborted prior to 24 weeks that could otherwise survive. The gentle lady from York County referenced two studies, one in the American Medical Association, which put the survivability rate at 4%, and another which said nine at 22 weeks. It's important to recognize that those technological changes have occurred. And when you get into the specifics of the dismemberment procedure, some have raised the question as to whether or not we can regulate it. I assure you, that question has been answered. It was answered in the Gonzalez v. Carhart decisions that were previously decided that banned what is known as the partial birth abortion method. The Supreme Court clearly said that we can, in fact, regulate procedures due to their barbarity, if we so chose. And it's also important to note to the, the gentleman who was questioning earlier as to when that break point is, as to when states can in fact regulate abortion, the reality is the court has answered that question as well, which is specifically why we chose the 20 week period. Because the courts have said prior pre-viability, it's, it's the decision to be made by the mother. However, post-viability, which as we referenced earlier through debate, has slowly been driven down from 24 weeks, which was timely and accurate at the time of its implementation over 20 years ago. Advances have occurred that that is still there and that some individuals can survive at an earlier time if given appropriate medical care. It is time that we update our laws to reflect that. It is time that we recognize that both the case law and medical technology has advanced since Roe v. Wade was originally decided over 30 years ago. When you look at that test, post-viability, there was one question, and that is simply this. Does the state have a compelling interest in regulating the procedure? And the answer is yes, because the court also went on to say that at that time, we have a compelling interest both in the life of the mother as well as the yet-to-be-born infant. And when you look at that test, it was very simple, and it's a balance test that is outlined constitutionally. We had that very same argument with some of the other legislation that the other speakers have brought up, and it's important to note that those bills still stand as good law today. We cannot pick certain case law and say that it is a right that is without limits, because the Supreme Court itself has clearly given us guide rails and limits. And when you look specifically 
at the gestational age, because I know there's a lot of questions about that. It's important to recognize that the way we count age is 20 weeks means up to 20 weeks and six days, because that is the 20th week. Mr. Speaker, I would offer that both the distinction and the compelling state interest regarding viability has been made. I think that it's time that we recognize the medical advancements that have occurred since the 15 years that I was taking x-rays, and more importantly, saving individuals who are not currently under our law. Mr. Speaker, that is the legal question, and the answer to me is a compelling yes, and I will be supporting the bill, because I think it's time that our laws reflect the appropriate changes both in technology as well as the case law. Thank you.